started to deliver on business priorities. We started to deliver on business goals. But it's certainly a lesson for me that this is something that you have to keep coming back to. Uh, and then that's not telling me the time. That's telling me what to do with my time. When I took over that team, that my premise going in there was that this would be a team that hadn't worked well together, had lacked some leadership, and had not really operated at what I would call that sort of cohesive, uh, high-performing team level. One of the pieces that used to frustrate me in our, in our team meetings was this um, passive aggressiveness. We, you know, people would put something out, nobody would challenge, uh, nobody would say anything. You'd leave the room and you could sense that people were not happy with the debate uh, and it would happen outside the room. And that was really the remit that um, I gave to Patrick in getting in there is saying, okay, I think there's a good bunch of individuals there. I don't think we're working effectively. So you've got two pieces to do. You've got to help me be more effective in doing what I need to be doing in that space, but in the context of the team. So we've got to take the team with us on that, what, I, what we call a high-performing team journey. The way we set it up was to say, okay, what is it as a team we wanted to accomplish in terms of what did we think success would be? What would this team look like 12 or 18 months down the track and then said okay each individual has a role to play uh, and so we did a baseline piece of where each person was from a leadership profile perspective from where we felt there were gaps and then we identified two things we said okay in order for this team to be more effective you have to be effective as an individual so what's the personal um, gap that we need to be working on, leadership gap that you and your coach can work on. Uh, and then what's one that we think is relevant to the business? And in some cases they were the same, and in some cases they were different. So we agreed up front that there would be two objectives, a personal one that you would identify, and then one that was, a, that was linked to the team dynamic. Anything else, and there could have been, and I know for a fact that some individuals had other aspects that they were going to work on, and those were very um, discreet and very um, confidential between the coach and the individual. But the two that I had visibility with and that we agreed on with the coach were the personal one linked to what was going to drive the behavior of the team. And that's the one that I would catch up regularly with the individual, with the coach, and that we'd share together with the team. So you're asking people to be quite vulnerable um, in a group. Uh, and so there's an element of trust there. And that's something that we worked hard on, is to say, OK, on the one-on-one -on -one with your boss or the one-on-one -on -one with the coach, that's a less threatening environment, and it's one that you probably would be more trusting. But that's not necessarily going to move the team into that high-performing space. So we have to develop a trust element within the team. One of the reasons I wanted to go with, with at least Patrick and his group is right from the very first interaction I had with him from a personal perspective, I was very upfront around what worked for me previously and what didn't, and that I would have the same view. If I, if I didn't feel value from a personal perspective, straight up front, then, um, then I didn't think it was worth investing my time in it and wasting his time in it. And from the very first meeting, that wasn't the case. So my feedback to Patrick has always been from almost every single encounter that I have, uh, I walk away with something that's actionable or something that's provoked me to think in a different way. Uh, and then that's not telling me the time. That's telling me what to do with my time. Every single person felt value. I certainly saw an increase in um, leadership potential or a different way of thinking. Some informal internal networks starting to develop where people started to see, well, hold on, 
they're in the same space I am. Um, they think similar to the way I think. Um, and I started to see those informal networks work. And that certainly changed the dynamic in the team. But it's certainly a lesson for me that this is something that you have to keep coming back to. This is something that you can start and you build it to a level um, and you have to almost like climbing Everest. You have to hit base camp, consolidate. We're now making some changes to the team. We're not at the base anymore. We're you know, you know, a third of the way up the mountain, but we've got to regroup, realign before we move to the next one. And I'd probably say that's where the team is now. Our credibility at an area level increased, so we were getting feedback from from uh, our area office, from the global office around um, consistency, around um, delivering on key commitments, and the team started to feel that. Uh, we were getting feedback from internally. I think we had one of the best um, employee surveys, which exhibited some of the things we had worked on. So clear leadership in the affiliate, aligned leadership, clear direction as to where we were going. Um, so those were some of the, I think, some of the tangible outputs and that was reflected in the spirit of the team.